Hello and welcome to another episode of the Space Update. Coming up on today's show, we've got Virgin Galactic grounded by the FAA, Firefly test ends in flight termination, and more space news. Let's do this. So, launch updates. Uh, we've got a Long March 3B slash E on Thursday, the 9th of September, around 11 a.m. UTC. And then we've also got a Russian Soyuz 2.1V uh, launching also on the Thursday, the 9th of September at 7 p.m. UTC. So, first up, Virgin Galactic, the Federal Aviation Administration, better known by all as the FAA, will not allow Virgin Galactic to resume flights of its Spaceship 2 suborbital space plane until it completes an investigation into a problem on its vehicle's previous flight in July. The flight with Richard Branson and crew appeared to go as planned, uh, but in fact it suffered a problem that caused it to stray from its restricted airspace. Virgin Galactic stated the pilots adapted to the weather changes that affected the flight, but rules are rules and the flight flew outside the zone specifically stated for that flight set for Virgin Galactic's Unity 22. It stated all flights are grounded until the FAA gives clearance, but it would seem more pilot error than something wrong with the vehicle as it launched and landed without any major issues. So we'll see what happens with that one, but it looks like a quick resolution either way it goes. Now, Firefly. Firefly Aerospace's first test launch of its Alpha rocket ended early with its flight termination system being activated two and a half minutes after liftoff on September the 2nd. It was absolutely amazing to watch the live stream thanks to Everyday Astronaut and a restream here on Total Space by our very own Astro Rody. Visually, it was a perfect start, fuel up and lift off, a massive achievement for the whole team at Firefly with those four Reaver engines alight off the pad at Vandenberg Space Force Base. About 15 seconds into flight, engine two, there are four Reaver engines on the first stage, uh, shut down and it was uneventful shut down. The engine didn't fail, the propellant main valves on the engine simply closed and the thrust terminated from engine two. The vehicle continued to climb and maintain control for about 145 seconds, whereas a nominal flight stage burn duration is about 165 seconds. However, due to missing the thrust of one of four engines, the climb rate was slow and the vehicle was challenged to main control without the thrust vectoring of engine two. Alpha was able to compensate at subsonic speeds, but it, as it moves through transonic into supersonic flight, where control is most challenging, the three engine thrust vector control was insufficient with those three engines and the vehicle tumbled out of control, as you can see on screen there. The range terminated the flight using the Explosive Flight Termination System, also known as FTS, if you ever see that tooting around on social media. Uh, the rocket did not explode on its own, uh, Firefly initiated that. And just a quick round of all the space news this week. Uh, SpaceX's Booster 4 is down at the orbital launch pad, as we record tonight, so hopefully we'll see another round of testing. Uh, the biggest and loudest static fire from 29 Raptor engines. Absolutely mind-blowing. That's uh, bring cake, bring popcorn, because it's going to be one hell of a show. Uh, also, sticking with SpaceX, uh, SpaceX has hit back at Amazon over its attempt to block amendment plans for its second generation of Starlink and that constellation, calling it a delay tactic to slow down competition. Another Jesse who attempt to stop SpaceX in its tracks, essentially. Uh, there's not an awful lot of detail on this other than Jeff again trying to stop SpaceX operating at light, lightning speed. Uh, I just hope for Jeff Bezos' sake those B4 engines get completed and we actually see New Glenn. Uh, or it's going to be all talk and no show for Jeff. Now I have a question. Rocket Lab or NASA? 